Stephen Fennec from Tech Guide here, and I'm sitting inside the Pole Star 2. This is a new electric car that's not going to be in Australia until early 2022. Polestar is a sister brand of Volvo, and this is their first entry into Australia. This is the Polestar 2. It's a fully electric car. Uh, it is uh, has attracted a lot of attention. A lot of people have stopped me actually asking me, what, what brand of car is that? They've never seen it before. Well, I've had to explain it to various people many times over the last few days that I've had the car and had to explain to them that it's not out till next year and that I have the privilege of being able to drive it early. So this is a fully electric car. There is a 20-inch forged alloy wheels. There are frameless mirrors about glass panoramic roof as well and up to 540 kilometers of range is what you get from the Polestar and up to 300 kilowatts of power. The car in terms of pricing is going to start at about 60,000 Australian dollars, which is comparable to the Tesla Model 3. I think a lot of people are going to be comparing this vehicle, no doubt, to the Teslas, uh, and in particular the Model 3, similar price range, similar size cars. This isn't quite a full size car, it's sort of between a mid to, to full to, to large car, and it's no doubt going to draw those inevitable comparisons to Tesla, just for the mere fact that it's an electric car. Uh, just to be clear as well, the chargers for Tesla cars will only work with Tesla. So just because you see a lot of Tesla chargers and you're thinking of buying an electric car like the Polestar 2, you have to remember that they are designed just for Tesla cars and that there are many, many other community chargers that you can utilize to charge the Polestar. I think the 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 thing that people are going to look at, of course, apart from the, the great looks and design of the car, which are immediately obvious, the, the whole factor of it being an electric car is something that people really need to consider. The only difference being, instead of putting petrol into the car, you're plugging it in. That's the, the main difference. There are a couple of other subtle differences, like there's no, there's no big engine in the front for a start. There is no spare tire. It's got a much larger boot area. But the characteristics of the car are very much similar to what you'd expect with a regular fuel driven vehicle. Uh, the car, of course, is has all the latest technology, includes a, a nice 20 inch, uh, sorry, 11 inch display here, 20 inch, that's how big the wheels are. The 11 inch display right here on the front, uh, it looks like a big iPad. Uh, it, it is driven though by uh, Android, uh, an Android operating system, but it's not Android Auto. Android Auto is basically a replication of your audio, your Android Auto from your smartphone. Polestar says this is a purpose-built operating system that happens to run on the Android, that happens to run on Android, but controls the car, allows you to connect your phone, access your entertainment, maps, all the things you'd expect. And it's in a conveniently located 11-inch display right here in the center of the car. In terms of design, I've got to say, I'm really impressed with the look of the Polestar 2. Uh, have, it has drawn the attention of a few people, including my neighbours, who were very curious to take a closer look at it, and all of them commented on how nice it looks. The colour of this car they've given me, it's kind of a cross between white and grey. They call it snow. I wouldn't have chosen this colour, but still not too bad. I would have preferred maybe a darker colour, but uh, that's just one of the many options that no doubt uh, drivers will have the choice of when the car's released in in early 2022. Uh, look, I think the, the drivability of the car, it's really, really nicely appointed, really spacious interior. Uh, the seats and everything are really nicely done. You can see the quality in the build, uh, not only from the external the external uh, exterior of the car, but also the, the, the inside of the car is very nicely appointed. So I don't think that uh, anyone's going to be disappointed with the quality of the vehicle at all. Uh, and the fact that you've got all this, all this technology at your fingertips, it is running Android, as I mentioned, so that gives you things like Google voice control, and you are able to also install app, various apps in the car. Apps, of course, that are only available for drivers, so your, your streaming apps and other apps like that that you can use behind the wheel. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the with, with the way the car drove. Uh, plenty of range. I think the partic this particular car that I'm driving is the more sort of one of the the, the top of model the top models of the car uh, does have up 
to about 500 kilometer range. Uh, so uh, that's, I think, something that people are really curious about. How far can I drive this thing? That's one, I drive a Tesla, and that's one of the things I get asked most often is how far can you go before you need to recharge the battery? Well, it's the same situation as how far you can go on a tank of fuel, how far can you go on a full charge? In this case, uh, up to between 400, 500 kilometers, depending on the model that you choose. There are models starting at 60,000 and moving up, up to around, I think, 90, 95,000 Australian dollars as well. You have all the features you'd expect from a regular car as well, things like cruise control, uh, lane keeping assistance as well. Uh, it has uh, access to all, all of the controls of the car are on the steering wheel as well. So your volume and any other any other detail or any other feature that you want to control is right here. There's also a small screen in front of the driver. So that changes depending on what you're doing. Generally, it displays your, your, your current location. So you can see your navigation is right here in front of the driver. So there is a separate screen here in front of the steering wheel, as well as that 11-inch screen in the center of the car. So there's no shortage of places to find out your information. Uh, but in terms of features, everything else you'd expect from a regular car, cruise control, all those things I mentioned, uh, and just adds up to a really nice drive. Uh, I, I really like the, the size of the car. Uh, I like the look of the car. It, it, is, it is a pretty unique kind of shape and, and design. And uh, as I said, has attracted a lot of attention from people who were very curious to find out more. I, I was even stopped in traffic. People would be pulling up beside me in the car, asking me to wind down the window and ask me questions about the car before the light turned green for us to go. So uh, I think once this car is released in Australia, you're going to hear a lot more about it and there's going to be a lot of interest. And I'm sure plenty of people are going to want to get behind the wheel. <laughs>